Good afternoon, everybody, and um, greetings from Florida. Um, really appreciate uh, uh, the honor and privilege to speak in front of this group. Um, we're going to hear a lot of semantics similar to what we've just heard from Sal, and is that uh, awareness, spreading the message, and um, and partners. Um, that's what it uh, is, was very key in, in our outreach efforts. Um, FDOT and Florida's Turnpike have always had a, been a huge supporter of Crash Responder Safety Week since uh, um, it has begun. Uh, we have done a lot of the issues that we spoke about with our messaging, uh, ride-alongs, tours of TMC and, and tours with our road rangers, um, our service plazas and, and doing outreach events and handouts and, and giving some of those freebies with the messaging, um, uh, branding, that's how mentioned. And um, so we've always been a, a strong proponent um, to get that word out. Um, but a couple of years ago, we wanted to do something different um, that really brought media attention uh, and coverage. And uh, what we wanted to do is, is reach through and have a demo, uh, a live demo with all of our uh, multidisciplinary partners, um, fire rescue, law enforcement, um, our, our peer districts, District 6, District 4 here in South Florida um, with FDOT, uh, as well as a tow association. And so um, we, in uh, on the November 14th of the Crash Responder Safety Week, we held a demo uh, where we had all of our partners come in and, and participate. And you can see the, the logos here um, with FHP and, and our local fire was Tamarack and Sunrise here in the Fort Lauderdale area. So it was a, a real strong effort to, to begin with. Next slide, please. The first thing we did on, on, the, on the, the DOT side was about three months previous when we decided we really wanted to do something different, uh, we really had to put together the blueprint and we had to, we put down the items um, of the events that we wanted to share and then find those key players um, that are going to be part you know partners with us um, with the same engagement to um, you know tout the crash responder safety week and the messaging we want for slow down move over and the safety of our responders we said we wanted news coverage that was the main thing was we really wanted to do something that was going to catch uh, their attention and get them to um, to our demo um, if you get anyone who's tried this in the past, know sometimes they will tell you they'll be there and, and they don't show um, or something else happens elsewhere uh, as a uh, you know, breaking news and you don't get the coverage. Um, so we really wanted to um, you know, focus on that. Social media, we wanted to make sure we applied um, a lot of the you know, demo and information that we're providing um, out to the social media. So it kind of lives on after the event itself. Uh, documenting with videos and images. We um, hired a couple of people to come in specifically for that and to provide that role for uh, videoing and, and as well as, as documenting with through, through our images. And you'll see a bunch here. Um, and then that media advisory was a follow-up and Julia's gonna hit on that of uh, really what that meant uh, day of and, and going forward. Next slide, please. This is our program events. And I wanted to show this um, really because it really brings down the number of people involved. And, um, you know, from our John Easterling, our, our DOT boss on the turnpike to uh, our, our major and head of the FHP Troop K, um, we, we brought uh, Bob Murphy. A lot of you, I know, know Bob, um, he's an IM champion and he was our event MC. And um, so we brought in, you know, the people who are really um, engaged in, in wanting to get the word out and, and help with the awareness. You can see the logistics. Um, you know, there's that was the DOT side, and then our media coordinators, and then we called them actors. You know, for the demo, uh, they did like that. But basically, it was our our champions from those other disciplines that really played the vital role in making the uh, the incident and the demo come come alive. And it was real key that they all um, were uh, on board with the messaging and that um, the fact that we're doing it during Crash Responder Safety Week. Um, you know, Bob, as, as having an MC to the event um, was really, you know, epitome of a team effort because he was able to continue, you know, as we as a live event occurring, we had uh, dispatched, you know, through the radio um, and responders arriving, he was able to relay what they were seeing and why they were seeing it as the event uh, un, un, unfurled, if you will. Next slide, please. Here's a lot of the pictures. So basically, you know, we had a stage incident where we had a, um, a large bus that um, uh, with versus sedan, basically kind of a rear end type thing with an entrapment, uh, fire rescue responding to the scene, 
um, and all the other responders to, you know, for the recovery and clearance. We did take make make sure we had a moment uh, of silence for responders we had lost that year um, and previous years. And uh, we also had set up, you know, for a viewing area, and we really kind of coordinated off where we wanted the audience and our, our media to be. And believe it or not, you see those tents out there. We put those tents out there for shade and to be cooled off. But as luck would have it, <laughs> they came in uh, important because we ended up getting a downpour that morning. And but we went, we went with it, uh, rain or shine. Uh, next slide, please. Again, as I mentioned, we went as a live demo where they they first appeared. Um, was they were just looking at the crash itself. They heard the radio dispatch from the TMC and FHP dispatch of the incident, and then the responding units as they uh, mobilized. And they were coming from offsite, arriving to the scene, fire rescue, law enforcement, um, then tow, and our road rangers to set up the scene. And um, then it was a course of the evolution of how, what we all do, um, you know, for the training to clear the scene, safety in the life safety first, and then the, the clearance itself. Next slide, please. So just as I turn it over to, to Juliet to talk about, um, you know, that was the, the baseline of our, of our event, but there was a lot of work to get that done, um, but working with our partners. But when we wanted to get that media coverage, we really wanted to go to our, our uh, professionals. And uh, basically that was meeting, getting with our public information office. And Juliet um, with uh, some of her peers really took the lead and really made it, uh, made it come to fruition. And I'll turn it over to Juliet now. Thank you so much, Mike. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to share some of the details of the communications outreach effort leading up to the event. The Florida's Turnpike uh, communication staff work closely with traffic operations and incident management uh, to begin the planning process and storyboarding for this multi-agency incident response training demonstration. Um, it took place approximately three months prior to Crash Responder Safety Week back in November of 2019. Uh, the event was designed to promote the importance of the move over law and show that incident response is a team effort. We attended regular meetings leading up to the event to touch base and review key messaging. Safety is everyone's responsibility. We discussed staffing uh, participants and confirmed the speakers that were going to participate from the various disciplines. Uh, on this slide, you can see examples of the deliverables and media outreach materials we developed, including an event brief, de detailing the background purpose and proposed location for the crash rescue and recovery demonstration, uh, English and Spanish media pitches, a media advisory, press release, and talking points as well. Next slide. Leading up to the event, our social media strategy consisted of daily posts containing either video or images on Florida's Turnpike Twitter and Facebook pages, and also included statistics promoting the slow down move over campaign. We featured live tweeting and posting during the event as well. Uh, as you can see, we had some activity on social media. Here are screenshots of a tweet we shared on our webpage, as well as those shared by our local media partners. Next slide. The response of a driver is just as important as the response of the person towing a vehicle. Re um, rescuing the trapped, healing the injured, and investigating the incident. Everybody has a responsibility and a role. The reminder is especially important as we enter the busy holiday travel seasons. The media turnout was a success because we made sure to communicate the goal of this full-scale incident response demonstration as part of our pitch, which is to show a complex recovery operation what it takes, excuse me, to execute one, and what Florida's first responders are faced with every day on a roadway. Next slide. When we contacted our media contacts, we described the key elements and event features, including visuals, that it was a large-scale recovery operation demonstration, including a realistic crash scene between a bus and passenger vehicle, real-time demonstration of emergency crews responding and reacting to a crash scene. A, a press conference is going to be held and spokespersons from the various disciplines will be available for quotes and on-camera interviews. 
We inform them we will also provide a complete media kit, including features, facts, figures, images, and more for their use. We also made sure, which is a very important detail, to do day of calls first thing in the morning as a reminder to all our media, media partners that this very special important event will take place rain or shine. And as you can see from some of those photos, it rained very heavily. So we are very, very fortunate that the media turned out nonetheless. Next slide. Uh, shortly, we will be presenting a video uh, of a WSVN 7 News interview with FHP Lieutenant Alvaro Fiola. The Florida agency is giving us a bit of a show and tell, offering us an inside look at how they do what they do to keep us safe. That's right. The FHP, the Department of Transportation, and Sunrise Fire Rescue demonstrated how they respond to accidents on the highway. It's obviously a very dangerous job, especially when passing drivers don't use caution. The past few years, we have a few incidents where our uh, first responders, including troopers that, uh, that were hit and seriously injured, for the failure to move over. You know, we, we tell them the motorists all the time about slowing down and changing lanes to be patient and to give us room to work. Great thing to remember, move over when you see these guys on the road. The demonstration included a staged rescue and ho hospital transport. Thank you. So altogether, this multi-agency incident response demonstration was one of the most successful and memorable events undertaken by Florida's Turnpike Enterprise. It was well worth all of those months of preparation and collaboration with our partners. Thank you, everyone. And back over to you, Mike. Great. Um, absolutely. I, I uh, have a hard time to find something that got as much coverage as we did on this, this demo. And I really want to emphasize the, um, the thanks to our public information office, to uh, Juliet and her whole team. Um, they really, um, as you heard, worked up to the week of the, uh, of the, of the demo, um, getting the word out and, and prepping, as well as the, the day of and that morning of. Um, it was really key of what they did and got that, that coverage. Um, this is a list of lessons learned. You know, we kind of touched on a number of them throughout, um, but I just want to reiterate here is that uh, you, you know, something of this nature, you really need to rely on your partners. You can't do it all. Um, and if you have your, and I know a lot of us do through our Tim teams, have those uh, relationships uh, where the, your, your other agencies have strong champions uh, who want to get the same message out, um, you can come together. Uh, we put it together in about three months, as uh, was mentioned. Uh, we made sure we had a champion from each of the disciplines and that they were engaged and that they were willing to do interviews. Um, if you saw some of the, one of the slides showed uh, interviews being done with road rangers, FHP, fire rescue, uh, the media was looking to speak to all of them. And so they were all made available. Um, we talked about the details. Uh, there, there's no, detail was too small. We, we were worried about, um, you know, the, the audio and video um, capabilities. We had a generator out there. We had a tents out there. So just walk yourself through it. Um, the demo itself, we, we did a storyboard for, um, and I think someone asked about the time of day and, and how long. Um, we also, because we're again, the goal was media coverage. We did it in a 1030 to 1130 uh, window um, on, a, on, a, on a Thursday, I believe it was. And basically that window um, in the mornings are a less busy time on the media side um, to get them uh, to, to respond. Uh, as well as the location we picked was in South Florida um, in the Tri-County area of Palm Beach, Broward, and Dade, so they could they could easily get there. Um, and we made it such that we ended um, on that 11.30 time frame, which then gave them some time to put packages together for not only the noon uh, newscast locally, but also the, uh, the nighttime, 5, 6, and 11 as well, which they all did. It was outstanding. Um, and as Juliet mentioned, you know, the the Spanish-speaking media was outstanding as well. A lot of coverage we got there, and uh, that is something that um, you know went a long way. Um, weather always, you know, we all know that anytime we do work outside, is be prepared for um, uh, you know rain or shine, and um, we definitely got the the rain. We heard some comments is that uh, our demo with the the rear end, the vehicle being under the bus, was typical what you see in a rain uh, rainstorm. You know, so. If they went with it, great. You know, it uh, wasn't our doing, though, believe it or not. Um, and then um, two months out, we did have weekly meetings. Um, 
teleconferences, and then the last couple of weeks up to the in, uh, the event, we had it in, in person. And uh, that's kind of how we did it. You know, three months out, we started storyboarding and, and putting the blueprint together. And then uh, two months out, we're having weekly, and then, you know, getting it, uh, you know, tighter and tighter as we got to the, um, the demo day. And we did do a dry run uh, practice, you know, um, the, actually two days before, and then a, a follow-up to setting up the day before as well. So, um, you know, it's always, you know, be prepared and um, as, as much as possible we can do prior to the actual demo itself, um, you know, went a long way as well. So I think that's it. Um, the next slide, I think, is for any questions. And I um, appreciate, again, the opportunity to speak in front of this group, uh, such expertise out here, and um, look forward to any questions you may have. Jim? Jim?